everything. 80%, I guarantee, of people who use steroids or, or testosterone or whatever else, probably even more, but 80% have no need or reason and absolutely shouldn't be using it. They're just looking for an easy way out. They're looking for a little edge up. How about you get an edge up being disciplined? What's up, freaks? Welcome to the Steve Eckert Show podcast. This week, we are going to talk about another controversial topic that's probably going to piss a lot of freaking people off. We're talking about steroids. Last week, we talked about alcohol and we went deep into alcohol, and I'm sure that ruffled a bunch of little people's sensitive feathers. And today, we're talking about alcohol's big brother, the freaking steroids, here on the Steve Eckert Show podcast. The Steve Eckert Show is a show on how to flip the switch and have a no excuses, badass mindset, guiding you to adapt, overcome, and destroy the obstacles that are preventing your success in your mindset, your family, your fitness, and your business, so you could stop being a little bitch, get your shit together, and start living life on your own fucking terms, all while you create your own personal ideal freak freedom lifestyle. This is about transforming men and women from where they are to where they want to be, need to be, and freaking deserve to be. And we, again, we are talking about today, steroids. So if you are sensitive to this type of topic, I'm going to start with a disclaimer here. First of all, let me start with this disclaimer. I am not an expert on anything medical or even on any kind of steroids or TRT or hormones or any of that. I am far, far, far from an expert. The, I'm going to, we're going to be talking about my expertise on experience dealing with people in this category and with just what I've seen on the internet, what I've read about, what I've, I've researched and things like that. I am by far not an expert. If you're, listen, let me tell you like this. If you're coming to the Steve Eckert show for your medical advice or whatever, you got bigger fucking problems than worrying about any damn steroids, okay? Because this is not reach be coming for medical advice. This is my own personal opinion and we're going to dive deep into it. And how about we start off like this? I mean, we're going to go into some statistics on steroids. We're going to talk about causes of, of low testosterone, why some people have the need for testosterone, steroids, whatever, hormone replacement, whatever, all these, I don't even know all the different terminology for it these days. I'm just calling it all steroids. And call me ignorant, call me stupid, say, well, this technically isn't steroids. Well, I don't give a fuck. I'm calling it all steroids for, for the purposes of not having to say all this whole list of all these other things. We're calling it steroids because when it comes down to it, that's probably what it fucking is. So we're going to call talk about the causes of low testosterone and why people need to be on steroids. We're going to talk about my version of what I think are the real causes for low testosterone. We're going to talk about how to boost your testosterone. And then the flip side to it about the people who use steroids as an excuse, like that's why they're out of shape or whatever else. There is a flip side to this. We're going to hit this from 360 fucking degrees. But I want to start off saying this. If you take steroids, you are a weak little bitch. Yes, I said that, and that might upset a lot of people, but if you take steroids, you're a weak little bitch. If you were someone who doesn't necessarily need to, and I mean need with a capital motherfucking N, need to be on it for specific reasons, and we're going to go into all that stuff. Now, I used to be, you know, I used to be a huge baseball fan, and all my childhood, that was the only thing I had was watching the New York Mets growing up, and even when I was in the in the Marine Corps, we used to watch baseball, and I lo- I, I started losing touch with baseball in the mid to late '90s when Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, these dudes were roided out of their fucking minds. They were destroying old records, like history. The history of baseball was changed because of these steroid freaks, and then Barry Bonds came in and even destroyed their their records of these people who, when I was a kid, hearing about the legends about like Babe Ruth and Roger Maris and all these like freaking amazing players that now were numbers three, four, five in the record books because of these steroid freaks. And I just always thought that was so fucked up. 
And then it, it, it goes into fighting and in the UFC. And even when I was a kid in the WWF, once realizing about steroids and all the wrestlers, the professional wrestlers that die, there's full YouTube videos, like 10, 15 minutes long. And now there's like five different versions of them about w, old, old professional wrestlers who died before the age of 55. It's fucking crazy. And yeah, there's other things in the mix. There's other reasons and lifestyle things, but there's steroids in the mix all the fucking time, or at least almost all the time. And let's then, then think of someone like Lance Armstrong. When I say steroids, I'm talking about any kind of performance enhancement, drugs, whatever. I'm just calling it steroids to make it fucking easy. Let's look at Lance Armstrong. Yes, he had cancer. Did he need some kind of steroids to bounce back from that cancer? Probably. Again, if you're coming to me for medical advice, you're all kinds of fucked up. But did he need some enhancement to come back maybe just to natural health because of the horrible things that that, that was getting what his body was going through? Probably. But he probably then said, oh, wait a minute. I kind of like the way this shit feels. You know how this could help me riding my bike for all these miles and ride like a fucking superhuman? And then you're beating people that you had no business beating? Like this, this is how, this is how, my, how my fucking mind works. If you're in a competition, let's say the UFC, and there's a, a fighter that's using steroids and a fighter that's not using steroids. First of all, I think, yes, steroids will help them. The, the fighter without it, can they still win? Absolutely. And I guarantee a lot of people thrive on that, knowing they're going up against some roid freak when they're not doing this stuff themselves. But think about like the athletes nowadays, these male athletes that are competing against females. Male athletes competing against females in the female division because that's what they associate as this week. And to me, that's the same as male athletes competing against male athletes where one is just busting their ass, working hard, working through injuries and strains and soreness and doing what they have to do and living a healthy lifestyle, competing versus the ones that are juiced out of their fucking minds. Now imagine if you had that same work ethic and genetics and skill and then you're juicing on top of that. That's that's some at some point it's almost equivalent, not as bad, definitely not as bad as, as the male athletes competing as the women athletes. Now, I've said it before, I'm going to associate, I'm going to, this is a side note, I'm going to associate myself as a seven-year-old girl, I said, and I'm going to go and join my, my daughter's soccer league, and I'm going to whoop them little seven-year-old's ass, I'm going to get the biggest trophy that's out there. I'm going to get some big-ass trophy, I'm going to put it behind me in the show because I'm a, a seven-year-old soccer champion, because that's what I associate with this week. That's kind of the, the mindset, the view that I'm taking on when I'm seeing steroids, all right? Now, if that's what you want to do to your body, that's what you want to use for whatever reason, go right ahead. But there should be like a steroid league or some shit. The steroid division of the UFC. And I know I have, they have strong drug testing and all this, and some people might even say that everyone's on the shit nowadays. I don't know. I don't know. The, again, the disclaimer in the beginning. I, you're, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm just giving my opinions. Don't give my thoughts. This is a Steve Eckert show and I can say whatever the fuck I want to say. If you don't like it, turn it off. Don't listen. But probably some shit that some of you motherfuckers need to hear. Like, the thing is, what I swear, where I said, if you take steroids, you're, you're a weak little bitch. That's if you are taking stuff because you don't want to do things the hard way. You don't want to do things the right way because you want an unfair advantage against whoever else, whatever else. There are ways to naturally increase your freaking testosterone. And I think the way it goes, I think this is what happens. I think men know it's hard, especially if they start getting a little older and your testosterone is naturally going to drop gradually as you're getting older. I think men start feeling that, all right, I'm a little more sore than I used to be when I lift. I'm maybe not lifting as, much, as heavy as I used to lift. And they start feeling like less of a man or whatever else. And so they go to their doctor and... And they just tell the doctor, yeah, I'm just not feeling myself. I'm feeling a little off. I'm feeling down and sluggish and uh, my mind is fuzzy. And they, they know all the key words that their doctors are going to prescribe them with whatever, some special secret sauce. And here's the thing. They, they, it's the same as prescription drugs. But you go in there and tell them you have depression or whatever else, ADHD, ACDC, or whatever fuck numbers and letters they want to concoct nowadays to call it a, a disorder and whatever else. Then... They'll give a prescription drug for any of that stuff without looking at deeper levels of what the fuck is going on. Like, how about looking at your lifestyle? How about looking at how you sleep and eat and train and your, your stress levels and your anxiety and, and your mind, mental levels and, and all this other stuff? Like, what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? How are you spending your days? What does a day in your life look like that's causing this lower testosterone? 
And we're going to dive deep into really all these, but yes, can, can, can low testosterone or whatever be caused by other health issues? Fuck yeah, I can. Like, but here's the thing. You look up research on it. They talk about the relationship between low testosterone and, and your weight. Your weight. Low levels of testosterone can cause weight gain. All right. So if low levels of testosterone can cause weight gains, you say, oh, I'm gaining weight because I have low levels of testosterone. All right. But why do you have low levels of testosterone in the first place? Also, then being overweight can also cause testosterone levels to drop. Think about that. You're, it's, it's a flip side of fucked on both ends of that. Then, of course, things with your blood sugar, diabetes or kidney disease or whatever, all ca- different injuries and, of course, different chemotherapies on cancer and radiation. This can all lower your testosterone. Those people, should they be on? Absolutely. Whatever it needs, you need to get through those situations, hell yes. But the, the potential causes for these declines in freaking testosterone is increased by obesity and BMI and diet and lack of exercise or not intense enough exercise or not enough physical activity or just too high of a fat percentage or drug use, alcohol, the environment can, can cause this stuff, the, the toxins in your environment, whatever, can all cause this stuff. Now, these are, look at all those. Those are all preventable. These are all not things you need a fucking drug for. Every one of those things is preventable. They're fucking preventable. And so, you know what the percentage, there's, there's different studies and now it's even, it, it's changing so much and it's getting going up and up and up. But they say low testosterone affects one in every four men ages 30 and up. One in four, that's 25% of men over 30. That's fucking crazy. And it's constantly increasing. It's constantly increasing. And the amount of men that are on like, and this is just different studies, like 36% of men with low testosterone get onto some kind of testosterone replacement or steroids or whatever the fuck you want to call them. And the thing is, most of those majority, you know, over 50% of people that get on some kind of TRT or drug or, te- or, or steroid or whatever, don't have it monitored or don't get followed up like professionally. And then the, the other 50% that do get it monitored professionally, 80% of those motherfuckers didn't need it in the first place. They're getting it monitored professionally so they can say, oh no, this is diagnosed and, and by, by, a, by a, a doctor. And most of them don't ever have follow-up visits. It's crazy. They get this stuff. They think they're just going to get it. It's going to be the quick fix. It's going to be the quick button. And they, they do no follow-ups on their numbers, on their levels, and all this other shit. You know, 30, 30, 39% of men 45 years and older have low testosterone. 39%. And it's constantly increasing. 12% of men in their 50s, 19% of men in their 60s, 28% of men in their 70s, 49% of men in their 80s. Obviously, as you get older, your testosterone gradually declines. It gradually goes down. And that's a given when you're getting older. But when men get older, they also start just calling it a day. I had a call one time with this motherfucker on the, for the project. He was looking to come in to join the project, our men's personal development program here in person in Southern California, a four-day program. And he said that... He basically was talking like he was at the end of his life. Like he, oh, as I'm getting older, I'm slowing down a little bit and whatever else. Motherfucker was 35 years old. 35 years old. He's talking about like he's on the tail end of his fucking life. And he's a 35-year-old fucking man. Should be damn near his prime at that time. And he's, so yeah, it's going to gradually go with age. But that's because men start acting like little bitches and stop doing the things you're supposed to be doing. And the way that the, the world is just getting so fucking soft. So let me break it down to you about what I think are the real causes of low testosterone in men. First, now I'm going to say genetic, but I'm going to listen to my, my way of saying genetic. It's only genetic because men are getting so fucking weak. They're creating more weak men. Yes, that's a genetic thing. Yes, that's in their fucking DNA. Soft men with little bitch ass levels of testosterone because they're acting like soft, weak little men are creating more soft, weak little men. So yes, it's fucking genetic. Both internally and the way they're living their lifestyle. There's a lack of strong male role models, which is causing low testosterone in the, the men that are not male role models and the men that are not re- get, having male role models, the men that are not being real mo- male role models, and the younger men that are not receiving male role models. That will cause 
a dip in your testosterone. Fatherless homes will cause a dip in your testosterone. Soft, weak, bitch-ass men bitching and complaining and being approval-seeking and passive-aggressive will cause low testosterone. High levels of stress and anxiety and worrying about stuff and fucking half-assing things in your life, knowing you're not living to your full potential will lower your fucking levels of testosterone. Poor health, poor mental health, lack of fucking discipline, lack of fulfillment and fun and a higher purpose will cause lower levels of testosterone. Stress and anxiety and your vices and all the, the, the lack of your dopamine hits that you're searching for and finding them in the wrong places and dipping into social media, that will cause lower levels of testosterone. And all these things that I'm talking about, this is the motherfucker that's going to go into the doctor saying, Oh, I feel off. I just don't feel myself. Yeah, because your fat ass needs to get to the fucking gym. You need to stop drinking alcohol. You need to start doing all the things that we talk about all the time here on the show, like journaling and meditating and spending time with your family and all these other things. We talked about it on episode number four about how we work out every day, how we train every day, how we recover. We recover by doing all these things. These same reasons why there's no need for testosterone replacement or anything like that or any kind of fucking steroids. And we still train every fucking day without any serious injury or breakdown or soreness or whatever else or overuse injuries. How about you start doing that shit? I think the motherfucker, a, a doctor should be like, you know what? You're right. You, you do sound off. You seem off. You're giving all the symptoms. And, and yes, your testosterone levels are very low. We're going to go 12 months. I'm going to give you 12 months and I want you to be training five or six days a week on strength and cardio. I want you to get into a, a boxing or a jiu-jitsu class. I want you to meditate seven days a week. I want you to journal seven days a week, twice a day. I want you to eat dinner with your family every freaking day. I want you to spend more time with your kids. I want you to get a hobby. I want you to have a little more fun, get a little more excitement, a little more fire for life. I want you to stop doing this bullshit work that you're doing, making bullshit money that you're making. And start living life on your own terms. Start living more of a fulfilling life to a higher purpose, a higher calling. We're going to do it for 12 months. Or you know what? You're still pretty young. We're going to do it for 18 months. And after 18 months, after you're doing that every single day and all these things that I'm talking about on this checklist, these daily disciplines you should be fucking doing already as a motherfucking man. After 18 months, if your testosterone is still low, then we can just continue this conversation and take it from there. But nope. Just like prescription drugs, most doctors are going to, here you go, here's your fucking needle to stick in your ass. Here, you're cured now. No, motherfucker, you still have the stress, the anxiety, some shitty relationships with your family. You're still fat and have man bitch tits. You're still drinking alcohol all the time and all these other stupid vices that you have. Try that shit. That shit will raise your testosterone. Now, it's not as scientific as, as whatever else you want to say, but it's the fucking truth. And it's some shit that some of you motherfuckers probably need to hear. Going out there and just you looking for the easy way out. The reason why your testosterone is low is the same reason why you're going to take the testosterone when you don't fucking need it. Because you're looking for the easy way out. You've gone the soft bitch ass route. You don't want to go and, and deal with uncomfortable shit and have discipline because discipline's hard. I'm not motivated. Motherfucker. Motivated. If I only did shit when I was fucking motivated, I'd be a fat bitch ass that's pumping steroids in my ass also. And then... You see the motherfuckers that don't do all the shit they should be doing as a man. They go and they get the stuff from their doctor and they take it and then they're still fucking fat and deconditioned and out of shape because they didn't fix the core root to the problem. They didn't fix the foundational problems of their overall fucking discipline. The fucked up things going on in their life that they're not a, a dealing with. They're not dealing with the lifestyle. It's a lifestyle fucking thing. It is rarely a medical thing. Now, of course, I mentioned all those other Places where it is clearly a medical thing. And I also know some people who have made it a medical thing. Like there's guys in the special forces community that have just beaten their fucking bodies down so bad that they're, all their internal systems are, are shut down and it's just incapable and they need it. Once you get to that point and you have nothing else you could do, no matter how great you, you work on your lifestyle, that you've literally shut down your internal fucking systems then yeah, you need to do it. I've seen guys that have military that have sacrificed their health for those, this, especially in like special forces community, they've sacrificed their health that there's no other option at this point because it's shit is just shut the fuck down. I think there's probably something to be said there similar to firefighters and, and doctors and nurses and ER doctors and people who work those overnight shifts, the nurses and doctors that work overnight shifts, like 
They are sacrificing their life. Now, if you're a, a firefighter, I had a conversation with a firefighter one time and he was on using some kind of testosterone steroids and was also very athletic, but also very young. We're talking in the fucking 20s, high 20s, low 30s, or even you see it nowadays in mid 20s, fuck. And saying, I need this because my job is so demanding. If I want to still work out and stay in shape and this and that, it's impossible with this kind of job. This job will run you into the ground. It'll take decades off your life. Well, then I'm saying, all right, if that's what you're saying, if you're a 20 something year old that needs to take fucking steroids just to perform at your job of a firefighter or whatever it is, police, paramedic, I don't know, whatever, doctor, you need to be the one for some change that, that causes some catalyst for change. Something needs to change in those careers. If that's the route and you think that that's okay and that's the message you want to send to up and coming people coming into that career field, like, all right, this is an awesome job. And listen, those are the, those, let's make no mistake. Let's make this very clear. These people I'm talking about are the heroes of the, those are the real heroes of this freaking country. But if what it takes is needing to, pump yourself of steroids from your mid twenties just to be able to survive the job and still be able to work out or compete in athletics or whatever at the same time or whatever hobbies you have. If that's what it takes, that is a wrong fucking route. And that is a dangerous fucking path that you are setting for yourself and for future people coming through in that career, in that industry. I recently was on a podcast with Dr. Mike Simpson in, he's from Texas, from Austin, Texas. And that's the kind of person that someone needs to go to. What we were, we were talking about this same thing. And he wrote a book actually about health and, and fitness and wellness for men over 40 called Honed. And I'm in the middle of reading that right now. But I was on his podcast and, and, and he was going into how he will turn people down. But like, no, you don't need any kind of testosterone or any kind of steroids. And he has a business. This is his business. And he turns people down for this kind of thing and says, no, you just need to get your shit together. You need to get your life in order. Like what I was talking about earlier about that 12-month or 18-month rule. You need to follow these steps. And after you've proven to me, don't just tell me you follow these steps or half ass follow these steps because if after six months or 12 months or 18 months, you've only half ass followed these steps, you're only going to half ass increase your testosterone, your well-being, your life. So then we're going to have to start that whole 12, six months period over again until you do this dialed the fuck in. How about having some daily discipline in your life as a motherfucking man instead of relying on some doctor just to give you some quick little pill or quick little needle to inject yourself with because you want the fucking easy way because the other way is fucking hard. Shit is hard. We were on the beach here in California about maybe like two years ago. Me and the family were working out on the beach and we're doing some kettlebells and all these kind of fun, crazy movements, bear crawls and throwing the kettlebells and, and cleans and snatches with the kettlebells and... There's a group of individuals in their little circle with their their all their food and their their keg uh, coolers of beer, and you can see them mocking us, like kind of mocking our movements that we're doing. And you even hear the word under the breath because they weren't that far away about steroid this and steroid that. Like here's the flip side to it: it's gotten so bad with motherfuckers looking for the easy way out, that the easy fix, the quick pill. That if you are in shape, if you even have a drop of muscle. If you have a one little ab on your stomach, oh, that motherfucker's not steroids. No, that is because you lack the discipline and consistency to train every day for 20 something years that any motherfucker that's not a fat bitch like you on the beach must be on steroids. So there is a flip side to this whole steroid coin where it's also used as a scapegoat for some fat, silly motherfucker on the beach that you can fucking like milk them like a cow. That will, they'll, they'll use that as their excuse. Oh, I'm not like that because I'm not on steroids. And then these motherfuckers are walking by with a bag of chips in hand and a fucking beer and a jug of fucking Coca-Cola, a two liter bottle of Coca-Cola in their little bucket, walking by saying, oh, I wish I was in shape like that. Motherfucker, you wish? I wish you'd put down the motherfucking bag of chips and stop drinking alcohol and stop making excuses and stop using the steroid, the other side of the steroid coin saying, oh yeah, they're oh look at that steroid freak and making fun of people who are out there doing it with their family and actually consistent and, and dedicated and fucking disciplined. I wish, or I hope, or oh, oh, you're lucky. You're lucky to be in shape like that or whatever. And Nowadays, you can't be in shape without being on steroids. That's the way it is. Like, 
the rare few, the outliers of us that try to stay semi in shape. And listen, if I was ever on steroids, shit, I must have got a bad batch because I'm a skinny, bony little motherfucker. I got a bad batch. I got fucking ripped off if I ever did that shit. But you can't even be in shape anymore. You can't even be in shape nowadays, especially in sports and athletic shit. I'm, I'm victim to that. I've seen guys in sports or I guarantee there's someone that I've, I've in my head or said, oh, I guarantee he's not steroids. That probably wasn't because you even get caught in the trap nowadays. It's just out there. It's just everywhere. It's all these people use this as a fucking scapegoat, a way of doing things. How about you start living the lifestyle you know you're supposed to be living as a fucking man? When you know you're not living life as a man, of course your testosterone's going to be down. You know you're a fucking shell of who you should be and your real potential, and you're not living according to your higher purpose. You have no fulfillment in your fucking life. Of course your fucking testosterone levels are going to be down. No fucking shit. You're living like a half a man. You're going to have numbers of a half a fucking man. You act and think like half a man and speak like half a man and have the effort and the attitude and energy and discipline of a fucking half a man. Yes, you're going to have bitch ass numbers of half a man and some doctor prescription or pill or fucking needle in your ass is not going to change. You're still a little bitch ass half a fucking man. You need to unfuck yourself first. And then if there's other things you need to deal with or whatever, like I said, after that 12 months, all right, now we could even just even continue this conversation. Not even a guarantee. Let's see, maybe there's some other things we missed, some other variables we missed. And again, I'd say it goes back to that lifestyle, back to that lack of strong male role models. Of course, of course, a weak man is going to create another weak man. It's just the way it is. Just like a strong man is going to create a strong man. Get your shit together. Get your health together. Get your discipline together. That stress and anxiety and all this other bullshit, social media bullshit, of course, that's fucking dragging you down. Story, and then on the flip side, don't just use steroids as an excuse. Oh, I don't want to use steroids. That's why I'm a fat bitch. Steroids used to be a word that was like about bodybuilders and athletes and, and drugs and, and hormones and whatever. Now it's just a word by insecure little bitch ass men used to describe anyone that's stronger or more muscular or more athletic or more disciplined or more dedicated than they are. So there is that flip side to that coin. And then I was reading these studies. This is some mind blowing shit. This is, I'm going to go get real sciencey and nerdy on you. Okay. I was reading some studies about say, okay, here's how you can naturally increase your testosterone. You can lose weight because being fat raises your testosterone or lowers your testosterone. You can lose weight. You can increase your physical activity. There are studies done on this that if you increase your physical activity, your testosterone goes up. There are studies done on that if you lose weight, your testosterone goes up. You can eat healthy. This is some groundbreaking scientific doctor shit here. These are studies like done over years from doctors. If you eat a well-balanced, nutritious diet, it puts your body in a position to operate at optimal levels and not lower your testosterone. That is groundbreaking shit. So let me get this right. All right. Don't be a fat fuck. Work out. Don't eat shit. Got it. Oh, next. Don't drink alcohol. Like last episode. Stop drinking fucking alcohol. It's a weakness. You don't fucking need it. Cut it. Cut it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Fucking cut it. So the, the alcohol decreases testosterone. This is groundbreaking stuff. This is like you had to, these doctors went to school their whole life to tell you they need to work out. You need to not be fat. You need to eat healthy. You need to not drink alcohol. And guess what else? You need to sleep. Groundbreaking stuff. You need to sleep. Not getting enough sleep and rest and recovery and regeneration will lower your testosterone levels. No shit, motherfucker. And then of course, there's the external things in your environment that can also lower your testosterone. The physical environment, meaning toxins or whatever else that's in your environment, maybe things in the containers you're using, all that shit, if you want to dive deep into that, that, that other stuff. But also, you know what else will lower your testosterone levels in your environment? The motherfucking people you're around, because that creates the thoughts that go in your head and your attitude and the way that you operate and live your life. The people you're around, the place that you're in will lower your fucking testosterone. Your environment will lower your testosterone. And then they did a study, okay, this is what causes low testosterone. So how do we boost your testosterone naturally? They said, focus on living healthy. That was the deep breakdown of these scientific years-long studies from several university fucking doctors 
to focus on healthy living. That was their great fucking breakdown. This is like breakthrough in science. I'm telling you this stuff. This is amazing. But no, we don't want to be focusing on healthy living. We'd rather just go to our doctor because we want a little up in the game and we want to have a little bit of muscle and not do the fucking work. And it's, it's, it's fucking stupid. So stop doing shit you don't need to be fucking doing. I guarantee, I don't even know the number, but I'll say, eight, I always go with 80-20 rule on almost everything. 80%, I guarantee, of people who use steroids or, or testosterone or whatever else, probably even more, but 80% have no need or reason and absolutely shouldn't be fucking using it. They're just looking for an easy way out. They're looking for a little edge up. How about you get an edge up by fucking being disciplined, motherfucker? And then the motherfuckers that use that stuff that talk about discipline. Oh, yeah, but those bodybuilders use it. But you know the discipline it took to get it? Yeah, but you know the discipline it would take to get it without doing that shit? A whole nother level of discipline. So you're about half-assing, you half-assed man, bitch-ass motherfucker. So this comes down to the question someone asked me recently. Will I ever take steroids? And again, don't forget, I'm putting steroids into this whole performance-enhancing thing. I'll never say never on anything. Right now, absolutely fucking not. Right now, I'm going to optimize myself for as long as I can to keep go doing things the way that I'm doing and trying to keep getting better every fucking day, trying to improve of making a better version of myself every fucking day, one step closer to self-mastery, and that does not include that needle in my ass. But will I ever be in a, a car accident where my leg is shattered and that's what it's going to take to help me rebuild and regrow or whatever else? Can't say never. I wouldn't, in those situations like that, that's what it's there for, medicinal fucking purposes, not bitch acidness fucking purposes, like the majority of men use it for. So here's the anecdote. Here's the, the breakdown. Here's the, the, the resolution. Start being a fucking man. Stop looking for substitutions of being a fucking man. Start being a fucking man. You'll have no need for this bullshit until you actually need it. Then then there's that discussion to start having. So stop being a little bitch. Get your shit together. Start doing these things we're talking about. And they're so simple. This was like, and that's all there is to it, to raise it yourself. I just went over it. From the doctors, from the universities, not even from this dumbass, bald, white motherfucker from New York. From these university doctors, the deep level stuff. Don't be fat. Work out harder. Eat healthy. Get some sleep. Don't drink alcohol. Don't do drugs. And control your environment. Poof. Poof, fucking mind-blown, groundbreaking shit right there. It says kindergarten day one level shit, motherfucker. And all that stuff balled up together, aka, be a fucking man. Be a fucking man. Put down in the comments below, when do you think it's good or okay for people to use steroids? What about you? Did you try it? How did it work for you? I want to know about it. How did it work for you? When did you use it? Why did you use it? Why did you stop using it? Why did you start using it? What did it do for you? Did you ever need to do something like this? Why did you need to do it? Were you ever prescribed it? Why were you prescribed it? Did you try to do other things first and it didn't work? I want to put down in the comments below. And if you know someone that needs to hear this message, I want you to like and share and comment and send this message to that motherfucker so they can stop being a half-assed man and start living their life as a motherfucking man working towards self-mastery with real, true, true fucking discipline, not internet discipline. Not mirror discipline, not needle in the ass discipline, fucking real discipline, real man shit. Yeah, we're talking real man shit. So like and share this with whoever needs to hear this message and see this message. Comment down below, make sure you like over on Spotify, on YouTube and share it, download it and rate it. Let me know what you think. I want to hear your comments down below on this topic. I know it's going to get some people fired up and piss some people off, but that's what I'm here for. Everyone needs an asshole like me in their life. This has been another episode of the Steve Eckert Show podcast. I will see you next time. And in case no one told you yet today, as long as you're not a half-assed man that's using steroids doesn't need to be using steroids, you are fucking awesome. No excuses.